Despite never winning the Man Booker Prize, British author Beryl Bainbridge saw five of her books nominated for the awards shortlist at different times. Among these was The Bottle Factory Outing in 1974, which garnered praise in a glowing review from the Sunday Times that year, expressing admiration for Bainbridge's talent. The novel, a blend of comedy and tragedy, revolves around Frida and Brenda, two dissimilar roommates living in a dismal London flat. Despite their contrasting personalities, they share a profound despair about life, culminating in Freda's bizarre demise. Their meeting in a butcher shop marks the beginning of their tumultuous companionship. Frida, tall, plump, and blonde, intervenes when Brenda, thin and tearful, confides in the butcher about her husband's departure. Taking charge, Frida proposes they become roommates, and soon they inhabit a dilapidated room with a single bed. Initially fascinated by Brenda's seemingly dramatic life and apparent middle-class background, Frida soon becomes exasperated by Brenda's lack of ambition. Frida, with her imposing presence, fervor, and grandiose illusions, dreams of being rescued from her mundane existence by a wealthy suitor who will cherish and protect her like a child. Brenda, on the other hand, harbors no aspirations and desires only solitude. Contrary to her compliant facade, Brenda had fled her alcoholic, abusive husband against her mother's teachings. Employed at an Italian wine factory, Freda and Brenda endure miserable working conditions and meager pay, albeit compensated with complimentary wine. Except for an Irishman named Patrick, their colleagues are Italians struggling with English. Frida, attempting to rally the workers to demand their rights, encounters resistance due to her intimidating presence and the language barrier. In return for their efforts, they receive only crates to sit on. Opposite the women's flat lies an elderly care facility. At the start of the novel, Freda stands by their window, weeping as she observes a hearse awaiting the remains of a resident she didn't know. Brenda dismisses Frida's exaggerated grief for a stranger. Frida defends herself, confessing her fondness for funerals and theatrically declaring her desire for a family-filled farewell envisioning daughters, sons, and a distinguished husband. This imagined husband is Vittorio, the handsome manager in training at the bottle factory and the owner's nephew. She shamelessly flirts with him, dreaming of a future in an Italian castle. However, Vittorio finds Freda's imposing demeanor off-putting. Meanwhile, Brenda endures unwanted advances from Rossi, the factory manager, who summons her daily to the wine cellar, where she tolerates his groping, due to her childhood conditioning to avoid rudeness. A misunderstanding leads the factory to believe Frida's mother has passed away, granting her time off and ample wine. Reluctantly, Vittorio agrees to visit Frida's flat to offer condolences. Frida, excited by the opportunity, plots to seduce him, arranging for Brenda to be absent during his visit. Patrick, also enamored with Brenda, offers to fix their broken toilet on the same evening. Brenda, unable to decline his help, hides with Patrick while Freda entertains Vittorio. Inebriated, Freda attempts to seduce him but only manages to frighten Vittorio. A surprise visit from Brenda's mother-in-law escalates into chaos when she brandishes a pistol. Vittorio and Patrick restrain the intruder and Brenda suggests they calm down with a cup of tea. Undeterred in her pursuit of Vittorio, Freda decides that her chances of success would improve if she could lure him outdoors. She arranges a Sunday picnic for the factory staff, hiring a van and preparing wine bottles and lunches. While everyone else is enthusiastic, Brenda reluctantly participates, unable to refuse. When the van fails to show up, most workers disperse. Rossi, eager to salvage the outing to be near Brenda, offers to drive. Brenda, Freda, and Vittorio squeeze into Rossi's car and depart London, followed by a few others, including Patrick, in a separate car. They reach a park near Windsor Castle, sparking Freda's romantic fantasies. She schemes to be alone with Vittorio in the castle, but chaos ensues. Just as Vittorio reveals his engagement to another woman, Patrick interrupts. Freda and Patrick come to blows as Vittorio flees. Following a tense picnic, the group descends into bickering. In a fit of anger, Freda provokes Brenda before storming off into the nearby woods. Brenda regrets their argument and goes after her discovering Freda's lifeless body. Unwilling to deal with the situation, they place Freda's body in the car and continue their outing with a visit to the zoo. 
Upon returning to the factory, they stuff Freda into a wine barrel, marking it as spoiled with an X and sending it back to Spain. Rossi then claims he followed Freda into the woods, where she rejected him and met her demise by accident. As the novel concludes, the veracity of Rossi's confession remains uncertain. A New York Times book reviewer declares, the theme of this novel is the waste of human energy. Indeed, Freda's schemes prove futile, and Brenda, enduring Rossi's advances, simply longs for an end to the aimless routine of life. While the novel may portray Freda's aspirations and Brenda's compliance with a comic touch, it does so with a poignant acknowledgement of the struggles faced by these powerless women. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe. Thank you.